Hi y'all, welcome back. We're about to get some learning done. This is actually week seven and your fifth tele-lesson. Woot woot, let's get her done. So we're gonna start out with your do now. So question number one, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide are considered blank gases. So what kind of gases are they considered? What do these gases do? How can groundwater be contaminated? Give one example of a non-renewable resource. Give one example of a renewable resource. What are the three R's? And I'm gonna give you guys a minute to do that. Quote of the day, earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man's greed. Mahatma Gandhi. And as you know, our norms do unto others, what you will have done unto you. Come prepared and ready to learn. Leave negativity at the threshold. So I know some of y'all are in the house and some of y'all might not have your own rooms or whatever, but I need you to find your space and your personal bubble. Leave all the negativity that's happening outside, outside. And last but not least, I need you to have high tech and high engagement. Let's get started with this lesson. So just a refresher, because I know this was some time back, but we talked about how carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxides affects the Earth's temperature. Remember, they are greenhouse gases that basically trap the heat from the sun that's coming in every day in our atmosphere, ultimately um, basically heating up our Earth. So that leads to Earth being more and more heated over the years. So last time we talked about pollution, we talked about mainly pollution within the water and the soil. It was a great lesson, Dr. Barclay. Um, thank you very much. Um, so what is pollution? Just again, an overview. Pollution is the presence of substances or things that have harmful or poisonous effects in the environment. It is the contamination of air, water, or soil that are dangerous to organisms. It can occur naturally or through human activity. And as you have noticed, Throughout these two lessons, we have talked about um, human activity. Actually, the last, this is gonna be three lessons now where we have talked about how human activity is a major cause of pollution nowadays. So a pollutant is a substance that causes harm to the air, water, or the land. So that is the actual substance that is causing the pollution. So we already talked about the air pollutions. We have carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. And we know how they can not only cause the heating of the earth, but they can also cause detrimental effects on the humans itself. Um, other air pollutants are particulate matter. So these are not molecules that we can breathe in and out and they ultimately don't harm us. Particulate matter, these are solids, so actual solids and liquid particles that are suspended in our air in total. And they can be hazardous to humans in multiple ways. For example, these solid um, particles can get within our lungs and what they do is they can cause a lot of breathing defects. So if you've ever seen those images of like a normal human lung and a smoker's lung, the reason the smoker's lung looks really black and really um, porous is because of that particulate matter that comes from actually inhaling the cigarette and not just the smoke, but what is in that smoke. And pollution, air pollution specifically, kills around 4 million people worldwide each year. And it can get to really, really dangerous levels to where you are wearing a face mask just to do your everyday things, just kind of like how we are with this COVID. So as y'all know, I'm from California and I went to the University of Southern California, which is right in the heart of downtown LA. This is the air that we breathe. Like if you guys cannot see this, look at how that smog is just around the city. And then you see the blue, right up here because that's the clean air and every day people are breathing that in they are breathing in that particulate matter harming their lungs one time they said it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes a day just breathing la air one type of pollutant that we use in our day-to-day -day life is 
plastic. And since World War II, plastics have been a staple in our society. So I listed some ways that we go come in contact with plastic each day. So we have bottles, containers, utensils, clothes. You may not think that your clothes don't, you know, they're all cotton or they're all whatever, but some clothes do have plastic in them. Think about some zippers that you have on your jackets or things or some buttons. Um, gum. Gum is nothing but flavored plastic. Shoes, wrapping, phones, computers, tools, cars, everything has plastic in it. And the main reason that plastic is so, so terrible for our environment is because it's not biodegradable. Biodegradable means that it can be broken down by a living thing, aka a decomposer. So bio means life and to degrade means to break down. So something living can break this down. And as far as we know, there isn't anything living that can break down plastics. There is some study on this type of worm that can break down some plastics, but others it cannot. Now, since plastics are not biodegradable, that means that they are just going to break down into smaller, 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 smaller pieces. They are just going to break down into the smallest pieces called microplastics. So you already know micro means teeny tiny, can only be seen through a microscope and plastics. So in our day-to-day -day lives, we might not think about this, but animals are ingesting these microplastics. So think about the water. If you're a fish or if you're a sea turtle, you are just breathing in water as you go, or you are just going through water your day to day. You may ingest some of these microplastics and bigger plastics that may look like a fish or something that you eat. And these plastics can get tangled in their digestive system and could lead to their death. And not only that, but humans could be ingesting these microplastics without even knowing it. So right now, I just want you to look at these four images. One that really, you know, was kind of disturbing to me was the bird right here. You can see him. And how he's in a plastic bag, trapped. But this image right here, as you can see, that image is just a bottle. We don't think about like after we drink something and we throw it away, where does it go? And that bottle is going to slowly break into smaller, smaller plastic pieces. You can actually see some of them like right there and there. And an animal could digest them and it can get stuck in their stomach and they could die. Not to scare you guys, though, but it happens. Other pollutants that humans use or need, um, especially since we have a larger um, population of humans, we need to grow more food, is fertilizer. Now, fertilizer, we've already talked about this when we talked about the nitrogen cycle, and we talked about how fertilizer can pollute water. Well, fertilizer can be either chemical fertilizer or natural fertilizers. Natural fertilizers are actually better because they are biodegradable, they are not concentrated, and they're produced through reusing and recycling. But the fertilizers that are used mainly in agriculture are chemical. And that is high concentrations of nitrogen, because remember, nitrogen is what plants need to grow, uh, nitrogen cycle. And these high concentrations of nitrogen, plants cannot take it all up. So what happens is when it rains, that nitrogen that the plants cannot take up gets floated into the water. So that runoff goes into nearby ponds or streams or rivers, and we don't think anything of it. We know that when it goes through the water company, they're going to probably filter out some of those chemicals. Not all, by the way, but they're going to filter out some of those chemicals and it's going to become our tap water. However, if that water is not going to be used or it's going to be clean, those fertilizers are going to build up in that water. And that high concentration of nitrogen is going to cause something called a algal bloom. Now, algae is a type of protist that is photosynthetic. That means that it uses the sun and carbon dioxide and water to make glucose, just like a plant. 
Now, this protist is so happy because there's a lot of nitrogen in the water. It's like, oh my God, nitrogen, I'm so happy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But what happens is it starts to grow and grow and grow and grow, 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 grow. grow. Until the algae literally takes over the water. That water is algae now. Look how much algae is in that water that it has turned it green. Now this algae flourishes. Yeah, algae, ooh, ooh, it's enjoying its life. But when this algae dies, what happens? Y'all probably already know. Decomposers come. And when the decomposers come, they are going to decompose the dead algae and they are going to use up the oxygen in the water. Remember, decomposers breathe oxygen. They're heterotrophs. So the decomposers come in and they start breathing up all the oxygen in the water, which leads to the death of all of the organisms in the water. Turtles, frogs, fish, crayfish, whatever is in that is now going to die. Not only do we have the decomposers using up all the oxygen, but you also have those decomposing algae just in the water, just dead things in the water, which causes more decomposition, which uses up more oxygen. And before you know it, this whole lake, pond, or stream is dead. All because humans needed their tomatoes in the grocery store and they used that fertilizer. And it all ran off into that river and caused this whole ecological um, devastation. On the same vein of fertilizers, um, you also have farmers using pesticides. Now, we have pesticides at home. If you use raid or rat killer, it just means to kill a pest, you know. Pest, something we don't like. Side means to kill. Now, the pesticides that farmers use are insecticides and herbicides. So, insecticide, insects kill insects. Herbicides, herbs, kills weeds. So we have something that will kill the insects on our crops and the weeds on our crops. However, again, these are not going to stay on the plant or in the soil. When it rains or the plants are watered, all of these chemicals are going to be run off into nearby streams or water sources. Or as we learned in the last PowerPoint, they can percolate or matriculate down into our groundwater. And they can be harmful to humans because they are really hard to filter out of our water. So you never know what you're drinking sometime and you have to have reliable sources and filters and special things that get these insecticides and pesticides out of our water. So you guys already know, label this practice one. This image is nitrous oxide levels in March 2019 and March 2020. What do you notice about the two images? So as you can see, this is March 2019 last year and this is March 2020, which is this year. What do you notice about the areas within Italy? So I will look at the red. What is happening now in March 2020 versus March 2019? Think about why you're not in school right now. And truthfully, do you think people care about pollution? Why or why not? And I'm gonna give you guys a minute to do that. So ways to lower our impact. We already went through this um, last time, so I'm just gonna go through these slides like bam, bam, bam. But let me make this clear. Big companies create the most pollution. It is not your average man and woman every day who is creating the biggest problems. It is giant companies that bulldoze millions of acres of land that dump millions of toxic stuff in our waters and that produce too much that we can't consume that it has to be thrown away. However, we learned about the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, because as you guys know, your money creates what is created. Let me say that again. Consumers create demand for our products and companies supply. So if there is no demand, there is no supply. So if consumers are demanding less or more green products, then companies will create a supply. But if there is not that demand, nothing will change. So yes, last time we talked about, you know, reducing your water, reducing your electricity, reducing your use of certain products. However, we don't think about going shopping. 
reducing our consumption of just clothes and shoes and jewelry, especially made by these fast fashion places like H&M, Forever 21, Rainbow. We can get a shirt for $3 at Forever 21. However, they are constantly producing more and more products, which leads to more and more waste. So as you can see in this picture, this is all clothes clothes that were not bought, that were not used or were used and thrown away, these are all of them in a landfill. And they do not break down because as I said, there is plastic within these clothes as well. So not only do they not break down, but they are just building up and up and up. And H&M, Forever 21, Rainbow, Charlie Ruse, American Eagle, whatever, all of these clothing stores do not care they are producing more and more waste. So what can you do? Maybe buy clothing at a thrift store or go to a secondhand store or use hand-me-downs. That way that you are producing less waste and companies are thinking, oh shoot, we don't have to produce this much because aren't too many people aren't buying it anymore. Reusing. So we already do this. Um, if you from a black household, you already know we reuse our plastic bags and Tupperware and um, those little butter containers. We do all of that already. So we um, are already at the forefront of reusing things that we already have. So styrofoam is something that needs to be just eliminated because it is when I say it's worse than plastic, it is worse than plastic. It never breaks down. It will be on earth until earth disappears. So don't go and use styrofoams. Single use plastic. So um, in the cafeteria, you know, when they give you your utensils inside that little plastic thing, that is a single plastic use that you're using that. And your fork, knife, and um, spoon are also single-use plastic because once you use it you're going to throw it away so instead maybe you might want to go out and go buy you maybe some utensils you can take to school so you don't have to use that single-use plastic or instead bring your own lunch to school because then you don't have to use that styrofoam tray they give you or that single-use um, plastic and then there could be a movement to where we actually have things like reusable um things that are given away to us for free and we don't have to go buy our own. And then of course we all know about recycling. Um, recycling bins aren't everywhere here in Georgia, um, which I'm surprised about because we are a pretty uh, metropolitan place. However, where there is a recycling place, just recycle. I'm not telling you to go out and say, oh, I need to recycle this. Nah, if you can recycle, recycle. If you can't, you can't. But just be more cautious um, about how you're using things and why you're using things. So label this practice too. And this is more of an opinion type of practice. So I really want to hear your opinions. And I am going to read these because I really am interested. So since COVID-19, many humans have been staying inside so they don't get sick. What impact do you think that has had on the earth? Do you think humans, once quarantine is over, will see the earth differently? Please explain your answer in two to three sentences. I am really curious about that question because a lot of people are like waiting to go outside and do all of this stuff, but Scientists are recording that, you know, air pollution is down and like overall animals are healthier, water pollution is down. But do you think humans are going to see things differently or are they just going to go back to being, you know, humans? And what is your favorite thing about Earth? And I'm going to answer that one. And I think my favorite thing about Earth is plant life. Um, I think plants are spectacular and I think that they are so underrated. Um, plants are like, I think, the sprouts of hair for Mother Earth. They are just so many different types and they can do so many different things. There's so many plants we don't know about and what they can do for us. So I think plants are one of the biggest things that I love about our Earth. It makes it beautiful. The green is just a wonder experience. And anytime I'm like watering or tending to my house plants, I feel just a whoo sigh of calm. So plants are my favorite thing about Earth. All right, so practice number three is going to be on your teleschool uh, template. So you guys know where that is. Make sure you label it practice number three. 
Um, it's going to be bi it's going to be on biomes and plant and animal adaptations to those biomes. So um, you might have to do one, some internet searches if you don't have your notes. And it's due next Thursday, May 14th. Um, I just want to say bless you guys. I love you. Stay safe. If you are observing Ramadan, um, good luck to you. And I hope you enjoy this holy month. All right, you guys. Bye.